April's are just around the corner, so we're going to check out what's inside the DC Previews book. Stay tuned, fans. Hey, all you webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And guys, you're with me, Mike Spiderslayer, getting ready to bring you the DC Previews book. That's right, guys. We're going to check out and see what's inside this book. This is for April. Pretty badass cover here as you get to see Joker there. And uh, I'm curious to see what's inside this book. So let's open it up. I'll take you on the overhead view and let's see what's inside. Alright guys, before we get started at any time during this video, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that all-important bell so you don't miss any content from me and fans. If you want to become a true Webhead member, guys, check out my Facebook a group page, otherwise known as Comic Book Corner 2.0. Webheads Unite. That's right, fans. This is the uh, group page where you get to see all kinds of behind the scenes things, whether it's me shopping at the store, or looking at comic books, uh, doing some uh, bloopers, things like that. It's just a lot of fun. So yeah, guys, it just gets you to know a little bit about me and some of the silly things I do. So if you're interested, again, check out Comic Book Corner 2.0 webheads unite i'll leave the link in the descriptions box below all right so here we go dc previews this is for april so as i open it up we get to see more of that joker image on there this looks like it's celebrating his 80th anniversary it's a hundred page super spectacular issue one this book is ten dollars and it's 96 pages just like all the other ones so i'm sure this is done by a whole bunch of other writers like we've seen um and yeah you can see it's done by brian azarello paul dini dennis o'neill scott snyder tom taylor and james tinian the fourth and more so this is a compilation of stories so if you like these types of anniversary issues and you like the joker pick this one up all right so next we're going to have a another 80th anniversary uh issue and this is the 100 page super spectacular this is for catwoman that's a pretty cool looking cover as well um we get to see there's different types of covers one is done by adam hughes for the 40s travis cherist for the 50s the 60s is stanley art germ so that's kind of cool the 70s is frank cho which is another one the 80s is j scott campbell 90s is gabriel Gabriel Delato, and then the 2000s is Jim Lee and Scott Williams, and 2010s is Jing Hong Lee. So, um, yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. I'm sure people are going to be all over those variants. And which one are you going to get? I'm sure a lot of people are going to be after go going after um, Stanley Art Germ ones. All right. So next we have uh, Event Leviathan Checkmate Issue 1. This is written by Brian Michael Bendis. My gosh, another Brian Michael Bendis book here. Um, this one is going to be for four dollars and it's a mini series and it's six issues so this is part one of six okay and the variant cover here is done by brian hitch um next we have a dc black label book here this is the last guy last god source book issue one so i guess maybe if this is everything that you want to learn about um the last god i guess so again it's this one's five dollars and this is 40 pages then we have strange adventures this is issue two um this one is written by tom king uh obviously the first issue was released in march because i remember doing the solicitations for it as well uh so we do have that Next, we have Batman issue 92, and it says the designer pulls Gotham's biggest heist in their dark design. So that could be a lot of cool. After this most recent issue of Batman, um, I think it's 88. I'm really digging the story now. Things are starting to come together. And what is Catwoman's role in all this whole grand scheme of things that she teamed up with years and years ago with these other villains? And will Batman forgive her? So we'll see what happens there. 
The art is done by Golan March, which he is a phenomenal artist when it comes to his Batman book. So him and Tony S. Daniel on that book is awesome. And then you have Batman issue 93, as you get to see the Joker on the cover there, and we get to see him holding up half of Batman's mask. That's pretty cool as well. Uh, next, we have Deceased Unkillables concludes with an epic battle against Wonder Woman. Now, I'm all on board with his unkillable shit because I really, truly loved the DC ceased storyline and unkillables is coming out very shortly the first issue and uh, i can't wait to see what happens with all these characters and what the main storyline is going to be here it's written by the same writer which is tom taylor so yeah really looking forward to this can't wait for this one this one's five dollars um with 48 pages long all right, and then next we have uh primer trade paperback um Maybe not so interested in that, but for the younger audience out there, this might be for you. Let's see. And then we got another trade paperback, which I'm not going to look over those. Um, let's see. We got this Wonder Woman Tempest Tossed trade paperback. This one comes out in May. So I don't care about stuff in May. I want to know what's going on in April. Here we go. So now we go on to the comic book. So here we got Action Comics issue 1022. It looks like the cover art here is done by John Ramuda Jr. and Klaus Jansen. So I like this one better. That's the one I'm going for, not that one, if I was to even buy this. I don't even know what's going on with action these days. I haven't read it in a very long time, but that's what you get right there. So we'll see what happens. Then at this point, we're on Amethyst issue three. So if you're a fan of this character, uh, you might want to check it out. It is done by Amy Reed and it's through the Wonder Comics line. So check that one out if you're interested. Then we have Aquaman issue 59. So at this point, it looks like Mirror has had her baby. So what happens now going forward here with this series? Because in this week's comics, it looks like that's when we're going to see Aqua Baby born. So whether I'll still be reading Aquaman at that point in time is still yet to be determined. All right, fans, so we're going to go on to Batgirl. This is issue 46. I don't know what's going on with Barbara there. What is that, like some gold paint on her or whatnot? I don't know, but uh, we get to see the covers done by Giuseppe Gomacoli, and the variant cover looks really good. That's a one to collect right there if you're in, into, into cover art. So, uh, yeah, it looks really cool. I haven't read a Batgirl in a while, so... I don't know if I'll be continuing it. Next, we have Batman and the Outsiders. This is issue 12. It's written by Brian Hill. So this book is also $4.32 pages. It's being released on April 8th, 2020. And then we have Batman Beyond. So we've had Batwoman Beyond come through. I think it's Grayson's daughter. Was that what it was? I didn't actually read it. Uh, but yeah, I know a lot of fans are digging Batman Beyond right now. So we have that one coming out on April 22nd. Then we have Batman versus Ra's al Ghul. This is issue six. This series is continuing. This one is being released on April 15th, 2020. I'm curious to see if we're going to get any new series here. We got some anniversary issues, but we still haven't gotten uh, any new number one. So we'll see what happens. Next, we have the continuation of Batman Superman. This is issue nine, written by Joshua Williamson. Um, same thing, $4.32 pages looks like we're dealing with a different story arc at this point this is a nice looking cover here um i don't know we'll see what happens with this one next we have catwoman issue 22 um four dollars being released on april 8th 2020 so nice pretty cool looking cover there detective comics issue 1022 still written by peter j tomasi artwork is done by brad walker and andrew hennessy so we have that and then we have The Flash, issue 753. So the description says here, in the Flash Age interlude, the fastest man alive must find the reverse Flash to stop Paradox's annihilation of the Flash legacy. But catching a time traveler is extremely difficult, and the Flash's quest to Ebor Thrawn takes him to tragic moments in time and never thought he'd have to revisit. 
Okay. I haven't read Flash in a very long time, so we'll see what happens. Not only do we have 753, we have 754. Check out this one, though, here. He's, like, stretching, and it's like he looks like he's pulled his uh, his quadricep there. That's just kind of funny. I like his overextension of his, like, I don't know, what do you call them, his little ears there on his mask. I, I guess that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got the Flash Annual. So you got a lot of Flash comics coming out. Then you got Gen Lock Issue 6, which is being released on April 1st at $4. And uh, it's on Issue 6 of 7, and it's 32 pages long. Then you have Green Lantern Season 2, Issue 3. So we're continuing Grant Morrison's run on the character, and the artwork is still being done by Liam Sharp here. $4, and it's being released on April 8th, 2020. It's a pretty nice-looking cover. I don't know what's going on there. I guess we're supposed to have a realistic cover. Who knows? And then you got some Harley Quinn in here, Issue 72. Got to love the facial expression right there. You got Booster Cold in the background. Um, and then there's a variant cover done by Frank Cho as well. Um, this one is also being re uh, released on April 1st, so April Fool's Day. All right, and next we have Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey issue two. Um, this is kind of cool because they're playing off the Brady Bunch. I think that's what it is supposed to be uh, or something like that. Um, nevertheless, though, it, it's, it looks cool. I don't read the series, um, but we're trying to capitalize off of the movie. And uh, I still haven't seen the movie, but I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard things that it's better than what people expected. So I guess that's a good thing, right? So we have that coming out as well. Um, that is a $6 book, and that one is being released on April 8th. All right, next we have Hawkman issue 23. It's still written by Robert Vendetti, which is kind of cool because now he's writing Justice League. So if you're a fan of Hawkman, then, uh, you know, you still got your writer on there. So that's neat as well. April 8th, 2020, guys. Then we have the continuation of He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse. This is issue 6. Written by Tim Seeley. You know what? This book is a great idea, but I just don't feel like it's been executed correctly. Um, I read two issues of it, and by the end of the second issue, I was like, eh, it's not for me. So I'm not going to be picking that one up. But next we have Joker and Harley, Criminal Sanity. A um, lot of Joker and... Um, Harley books as of late, especially in that DC Black Label stuff. I read the first issue of this. I wasn't crazy about the artwork when it came to like the realism of it. So um, I stuck with some of the other ones that were released. So I won't be picking this one up either. But I do like the covers in them. They're just they're really creepy here. It says an absorbing at times horrific dark psychological thriller. All right. Let's see what's next. Justice League issue 44. Demons from Antarctica is on the loose. Continued to be written by Robert Vendetti. This one is being released on April 1st. It's 2020. So we'll see what happens. And then you got Justice League issue 45. The Spectre demands global vengeance. This one is being released on the 15th of the month. So we got Justice League twice a month here, fans. So hopefully... This story is going to be good. We'll see what happens. All right, next. Fans of Justice League Dark, we have issue 2022 20, coming out. Into the Mind of Abigail Arcane. So we get to see that story there. This one is being released on April 22nd, and it is $4. Next, we have Justice League Odyssey. This is issue 20. Pretty cool looking cover. Uh, not much of a description on the cover for it in any way. Um, but yeah, this one is being released on April 1st. So do you guys find any of these books are citing how do you think of dc right now as a company are you on board are you not on board are you looking for something new something fresh uh tell me in the comments below guys all right next we have legion of superheroes this is issue six written by brian michael bendis legion of superheroes is a complicated concept to get right yet bendis and Sook seek to make it one of DC's A-list titles. This has been reported by The Hollywood Reporter. So that's what you got there. All right. Next, we have Lois Lane issue 10. This is written by Greg Rucka. I think as of late, we got introduced to this new character that was wearing this mask. 
an exposed like a skeleton face or whatnot. So that's, I guess that's kind of cool. Um, so we'll see what happens with that book. That's a nice looking variant cover there. And then we have, let's see, Mad Magazine, issue 13. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Issue 104. Metal Men, issue 7. So that's still going on. It's written by Dan Didio. I don't know if I say his name right or not. Um, and then that one is on sale April 15th. Not a fan of that book myself. Nightwing, issue 71. It says, Rick Grayson is captured by the Joker. When is Rick going to be Dick again? Okay, I think people are tired of Rick Grayson. Um, I get that, you know, he was shot in the head and he doesn't remember what he wants, but I don't hear anybody, anyone, I mean nobody, talking about Nightwing issue seven or Nightwing in general these days. So I want to know in the comments below, are you guys reading Nightwing anymore? And do you want Nick, uh, Rick to be Dick again. It's crazy. There's a lot of Rick and Dicks going on. Then we got the Nightwing Annual. This is issue three. So we have that coming out. Okay. So next we have the question death deaths of Vic Sage. This one is written by Jeff Lemire. I heard this book was actually pretty good. Uh, I just never physically was into the character. Um, I just never, you know, really liked him all that much so i just never had an infatuation of trying to read him or whatnot so we'll see what happens but newsarama says it's a dark shadowy story that benefits the black label name so okay that's cool red hood outlaw this is issue 45 so we still have jason todd in this book pretty much by himself he has no more outlaws with him so where is artemis and bizarro are they still in that different world i don't know i haven't read that book in quite a while actually since they went to that different world all right next we have rwby and i appreciate you guys telling me in the comments in the last solicitations video about who this character is and whatnot so and i think i forgot but nevertheless i know you guys spent your time and you told me so i really appreciate it this variant cover looks good even the main cover looks good so hopefully you guys enjoy it it's being released on april 8th and it's a four dollar book next i think we have the conclusion to shazam right this is issue 12 that says ambitious mythology driven and uh wide-eyed wonder and wonder and charm so the another book that's been taking forever to come out i read the first six issues but i just couldn't get into the story anymore because it just took forever to come out it was the same thing with um the Watchmen series, you know, Doomsday Clock. I couldn't get into that. So I went waiting for collected editions when it comes to this to possibly uh, finish reading the actual story. And then let's see, we got Suicide Squad issue five. This is done by Tom Taylor. Um, really great story, I think, so far when it comes to these first two issues. Give Tom Taylor time to really dive deep into these characters. So I'm really looking forward to that. This one is released on April 22nd. Next, we have Supergirl. This is issue 41, uh, continue to be written by Jody Hauser. This is being released on April 22nd as well. And then we have Superman. This is issue 22, written by Brian Michael Bendis. Yeah, so... Oh boy, I just, same thing, I'm dropping it again, you know, after his reveal of his identity and says he got friends to tell him the truth, and then he go fights um, uh, one of the big bads, uh, I kind of just, you know, it was Mongol who you went to go face, and it looks like he's still facing him here, I just don't find the infatuation with it, like, it's boring to me, there's nothing really going on with Superman, so unfortunately I'm not on board. Then we got Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, issue 10. This is written by Matt Fraction. Then you have Teen Titans, issue 41. Uh, probably the best book in DC, in my opinion. And I'll say this every time, and I'll back it up every time. Uh, Adam Glass has done this team right. He's really put them together. They got all kinds of great character interactions and development. You care about these characters. You want to go for these characters. And that's what a comic book should have. And with the great artwork... Um, this is a spectacular book, so I can't wait for this. April 15th, 2020. And then you have its annual issue two. 
Next, we have the Terrifics, issue 27, which is being released. So we have that as well. This is being released on the 8th of April. And then um, issue number two of this is getting ready to come out, but this is issue three. This is Wonder Woman Dead Earth. And um, I love the first issue of this. You know, you got Wonder Woman who's been asleep for many, many years and she's come back and she's come across the world. It's, it's an apocalyptic world. And now she's about to hit Thamascara and see what that place looks like. So I can't wait to see what happens here because we get to see the Superman shield and uh, we get to see what she's going to walk through here. So this could be a lot of fun. I can't wait for it. This one is $7. It comes out on April 29th. Then we have Wonder Woman issue 755. This is introducing the four horse women, not the men, the women. Still written by Steve Orlando. This is being released on April 8th. This is 2020. And then next here, guys, we have Wonder Woman issue 756. The horse women ride against the Amazons. So I guess that's what these women look like here. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there going forward. Then we have with Wonder Comics, we have Young Justice issue 15 as it's crossing over with Action Comics guest starring Superman. So um, I think I just recently dropped Young Justice 2 as well. I just, it just does, it's not entertaining for me. There's too much going on. Brian Michael Bendis wants this big, spectacular event with all his people that he created in one book and it's just there's too much and it's just not enough character development or growth or plot for that matter you know it's been so focused on uh on on superboy here you know it's just like uh, he's been back to the different earth then he goes back to normal earth then he goes back to back to earth and it's just it's just too much it's too much for me and then you got DC's Young Animal Far Sector, issue six. I heard this book was pretty good. Um, again, just not my type of lantern book. All right. So here's something that might interest you if you're a horror fan. Uh, I've been recently reading Lock and Key, and I'm a fan of Joe Hill, even though I haven't read all of these books. But it's the final issues of, of the series that started of all. So we got the final issues of Basket of Heads. Um, then you have Daphne Brian, uh, we got issue number four of that. That is a creepy ass cover right there, man. Holy crap. And then you got the final issue of the Dollhouse family, which I've been reading this, and this has been really good. That is creepy as fuck right there. And then you got the Lolo Woods. So you have that. So that's getting ready to be released. And you have the Plunge, which I'm actually starting that this particular week, I think, or next week. Um, so we'll see what that's all about with a sunken cruise ship like Titanic, and they have to investigate it. And then you got, uh, and then here you have um, Books of Magic, issue 19. That's being released as well. Next, we have The Dreaming, issue 20. Not a fan of these Sandman books. I never was. Never felt like I could get into it because Sandman's been around for so long. And let's see, we got John Constantine, Hellblazer, issue 6. Uh, Lucifer, issue 19. And then you got your dollar comics, which is kind of cool. Uh, DC Superstars issue 17. That's kind of being, that's being released. Oh, I'm sorry. These aren't the dollar ones. These are like the reprints. So this is the $5 price tag. Detective Comics, $4.75. That's $4. And then um, you have 100 paid giants that are being released. Batman Giant issue four for $5. The Flash Giant, issue four for $5. Our Fighting Forces Giant, issue one, that's $5. Swamp Thing Giant, number four, that's $5. And then here's your dollar comics all over here. So um, you have Batman issue 13 uh, from 2013. Holy crap, that Death in the Family stuff? That was from 2013 already? That was six years ago? <laughs> And then you have uh, Batman issue 450, which I actually have this comic book, part of my original collection when I started collecting comics. Dollar Comics, Batman 663, and Dollar Comics, Catwoman 2002 from Ed Brubaker is being re-released as well. And then you got all these other ones. Remember this one, all the controversy that this Catwoman um, came out with, with her and Batman doing it on the roof? That was crazy. Then you got this Checkmate. 
and then you have the original Sinestro stuff. So yeah, you got a lot of stuff coming out here. So all these, and then you got these collected editions as well, which is all coming out. So all this is from DC Comics as well. So let's see what else we have. Anything else? The Adventures of Superman by George Perez. It's a $50 book for 448 pages. So that's pretty cool. Then you have Batman the Caped Crusader, Volume 4, Trade Paperback. Um, this is for $35. Crisis on Infinite Earths, Arrowverse Deluxe Edition. That was actually a pretty good story. I remember reading that. This is by Mark Guggenheim. Uh, it was actually really well done. I enjoyed that when it came out. Uh, this will be released in May 6 of 2020. Um, that is for $18. DC Poster Portfolio. And then we have the Doomsday Clock. This is the second part of it. So if you haven't read Doomsday Clock like me, uh, this one's being released in May for $25. So yeah, and it has a slipcase with it too. So that's pretty neat, right? 232 pages. Yeah, I might have to pick that one up. Let's see what we got. Sergeant Rock, DC Goes to War. The Flash by Mark Wade, book seven is being released. Then we have um, Joker, the deluxe edition hardcover. Includes previously unprivileged, unprivileged, unpublished artwork. Uh, it's 152 pages, $35. So and then we have a few of these other things. New Teen Titans looks pretty cool. Volume 11. I love Titans Tower right there. That's pretty cool. And then we have the Sandman uh, series where it collects all 14 Sandman 30th anniversary trade paperbacks. So if you're a fan of this, guys, this might be something to pick up. Neil Gaiman, um, and this is $250 for 14 volumes. Let's see. And then we got the Stargirl series by Jeff Johns. Event Leviathan, if you're into that shit. And then... Uh, Let's see, we got some Wonder Woman stuff here. Wonder Woman through the years. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Nothing else here is tickling my fancy. So, yeah, we got some cool statues there. I like this one. Batman Who Laughs statue, $375. And then you got this Harley Quinn one for $200. Another Harley. When in doubt, sell your Harley, right? Batman Who Laughs. Mr. Freeze. That's pretty cool, though, as it goes to that piece right there. So, yeah. Well, there you guys have it. The DC previews book for the month of April. Right? So, in this entire April DC previews book, there was not a new number one book being released here. Not a single one. Everything is always, is already in a series or it's a celebratory issue. So nothing exciting, I feel, to really be excited about. It's the same old stuff. So guys, leave me in the comments below. Are there any books that you're going to put on your pull list after seeing this April DC previews guide? Or is there stuff that you're possibly going to drop? Or is it just going to stay the same? So guys, as always, thank you for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. Until the next review or video or whatever the case may, may be, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. And I'll see you all real, real soon. Take care, fans.